National car maker Proton Holdings Bahad has revised down its sales target from an earlier 120,000 unit goal to 100,000 units. According to CEO Dato Ahmad Fuad Kanali, this is due to delayed launches of its new models. Saying that, Proton successfully launched the second generation of its Persona range today, which according to Ahmad Fuad has already garnered around 1,000 bookings pre-launch. Proton is aiming for sales of between 3,000 and 4,000 units monthly from the Persona Gen 2. Ahmad Fuad says that the car is targeted at the young and trendy segment and said that the feedback from the recent media preview has been positive. Pricing starts from 46,800 to 59,800 ringgit for Peninsula Malaysia. Also in the pipeline this year for Proton are two new models which are a new Saga and a B-segment MPV. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said that his government needed to look at the whole range of opportunities and challenges when evaluating Petroleum National Bahad's Pacific Northwest LNG project. Tree Hugging Trudeau was quoted in reports as saying that the Canadian government's emphasis is on cleaner and renewable energy sources. He explains that in terms of emissions, coal is worse than oil, which is worse than LNG. As such, his government needs to make sure that it is looking at the whole range of opportunities and challenges. Earlier, Petronas had said that it needed to conduct a total review of its Canadian LNG project once the final environmental assessment report has been received. Petronas has reportedly already pumped in almost 50 billion ringgit into the project and expects to make its final decision in the next couple of months. Plantation conglomerate Saim Dabi Bahad saw its net profit for the fourth quarter of FY 2016 increase by 13.4% due to the recognition of an Indonesian special tax incentive. As a result, net profit came in at 1.1 billion compared to 1 billion the previous year, while in contrast, top line dropped 8.8% to 11.7 billion as volatile commodity prices and the poorly performing economy took its toll. However, Saim Dabi's president and group chief executive Tan Sri Muhammad Bakir Saleh says that despite the tough environment, it still managed to exceed its KPI targets for 2016. Saim Dabi also proposed the placement of new shares of up to 316.35 million shares or 5% of its existing share base to select investors. The indicative price of the shares is 7 ringgit and 51 cent, which could raise proceeds up to 2.37 billion ringgit, where 50% would be for repaying borrowings, 40% for capex, and 10% for working capital and expenses. Break out the kegs, Carlsberg Brewery Malaysia Bahad's net profit for the second quarter of FY 2016 financial year surged by 62%, clocking in at 51.4 million ringgit compared to 31.7 million the year previously. This was mainly due to a one-time impairment loss of 12.5 million ringgit relating to the Luen Heng FMB Sundar Bahad divestment. As such, not taking into account the divestment, revenue softened marginally by 1.6% to 395.8 million from 402.3 million last year. The brewer had taken a hit on its sales of strong beer and stout brands from new excise duties and thus adjusted the alcohol strength of some of its brands to keep it affordable to the drinking masses and yet tasting the same. Carlsberg's MD Lars Lehman said that the aggressive tax increase had dampened its outlook, but the group will continue to strengthen the efficiency of its Malaysian and Singapore ops and reinvest in its key brands. The company also declared a single-tier interim dividend of 50 cents. For those who felt that the first half of 2016 was a wash, the Federation of Malaysian Manufacturers and the Malaysia Institute of Economic Research say that the business conditions should get better during the second half of the year. According to the FMM Mere Business Conditions Survey, expected business conditions for the second half stood at 107 points, namely a more positive outlook. FMM President Tan Sri Saw Chu Bon said that the latter half of the year will mainly be supported by the weakened ringgit and ongoing efforts by Martrade to boost global trade. However, he still errs on the side of caution, warning that the global economy is still facing challenges and could turn weak in the second half, which could bode badly for Malaysia given that it is an exporter.